What's up Brozones, welcome to the Ozone, and welcome to my first ever video covering the content of Security Breach's Ruin DLC. Guys, we have so much to talk about and I just cannot wait to make all the videos I want to make. Before we get started with today's video though, I have a few things I quickly want to go over. First of all, of course, this video has come out in the same week as the DLC, so please be wary of spoilers. Also note that some of the information I talk about today is as a result of me watching two playthroughs in one day, so I may get some technical things wrong and these things could be debunked as the game gets older. So in Another thing, oh my gosh I was right. First of all, I made a whole video about how Ruin would be a trap because Gregory was not real and I could not have been more right. I'm gonna have to do yet another Mimic video in relation to new information and such, but it is absolutely crazy that all of this stuff has been proven now. Gregory was being mimicked and Cassie was trapped. Again, I'll talk about this more in the near future so make sure you subscribe to see it. I absolutely love the lore implications of this DLC. The Mex's rabbit might just be one of my favourite designs in the entire series and the supposed twist that he was the good guy all along was done so well. But really, I do have a lot of questions coming out of the DLC. Each one of these questions kind of deserves its own video, so that's what I'm going to try to do. Who's Cassie and why is she important? What's with Gregory's comic pages matching up with Security Breach's endings? Is there more to the lore of Glamrock Bonnie? But today, I want to focus on something a little more specific and minor. Because if there was one place I could guarantee finding lore, it's through Candy Cadet. So, if you don't know, this is Candy Cadet. Or at least, what's left of him. He looks like he's been sitting here alone for years, rusting, dusty and dilapidated. Well, back in Pizzeria Simulator, Candy Cadet was a lot more vibrant and was actually essential to a lot of the key lore we know about today. To be more specific, every story that Candy Cadet told us in that game was related to five things going into one thing. I'll spare you the details, but I made a nice little video about Pizzeria Simulator, and ID also made a video on her interpretation of Candy Cadet quite recently. But all of this time later, Candy Cadet is back and he has yet another story for us. First of all, the fact that Candy Cadet is here at all is very telling, but also makes a lot of sense. Excluding Ultimate Custom Night, because that's all in Afton's mind, Pizzeria Simulator was the last time we saw him. The Pizzeria was Freddy Fazbear's Pizza Place, which is exactly where we were below Roxy Raceway last time. And if you're still questioning if it actually makes sense for him to be here, Steel Wool actually left prototypes in the game for each room, showing their original intent for the DLC. And in this room we actually have the original Freddy, Bonnie and Chica. It's weird, right? But I don't think they planned for it to be the original animatronics. I think they were hoping for these to be the Rockstar animatronics. That would be a clear indication that we were still dealing with the pizza place, and it would be a really cool thing to see given that a fire happened between the events. I think the FNAF models are just placeholders because they don't currently have models for all of the Rockstar animatronics, so instead we have Candy Cadet. There are some differences in design but I think these were good changes. When I first saw him just standing here alone I think my heart did a backflip. In order to activate him and get the full story you're going to need 7 Faz tokens in total. Ok I'm stalling, let's just get into the story. I absolutely love Candy Cadet's broken and dry voice in this game, as well as the low-pitched horn at the end. This robot has been through some things. Regarding the story, we have three characters. We have a mother, a little boy, and a monster. 
If we are to interpret this story like we have interpreted others previously, we should be seeing a very clear theme that ties into the story the game is trying to tell, and we may even have these characters and events paralleling the characters and events in Ruin. The real thing that struck a chord with me was when he said that the mother would sing the boy a lullaby, then the monster listened to the lullaby and learned it. Or, to put it in other words, it mimicked the mother. The monster mimicked the mother. If this isn't a story related to the mimic, I don't know what is. You know, I'm sort of done with talking about the mimic these days. I've done four videos and a YouTube short where I've had to catch everyone up on the book's mimic lore, and it's been quite tiring. But now, at least I have a real model for the Mimic. If you want to learn more about who the Mimic is in the books, you can check out these videos or you can wait because I'm probably going to do one final Mimic summary video soon anyway. If we look at where the Mimic resides, it's in the pizza place. It's below the pizza flex. And just like the books, it is trapped in due to concrete being poured over the door. So either way, I guess what I'm trying to say is that this thing is locked in the basement. If that's the basement, the pizza plex is the cabin in the woods. There's some really odd details about this basement though. It's here where it becomes extremely apparent that the Mexis program, this black rabbit that we've been seeing all the way through the DLC, was only trying to stop us because we were breaching the pizza plex security. But the really weird thing is that down here there is a rucksack that has the name Gregory on it. It's clear that no matter which ending was canon, the Princess Quest Saviour ending, the Burn Trap ending, or even somehow both, Gregory was here once. And the big theory at the moment is that Gregory and Vanessa, after escaping the pizza plex, came back and installed this security program that would help keep the Mimic at bay. And now, unfortunately, Cassie has fallen for the trap and it's going to lead into the future games of the series. And some of you may have already seen the huge connections here to Candy Cadet's story. My proposition is that Gregory is the mother and Cassie is the child. Gregory shut away the monster and Cassie let it out. Now I will tell you a story about a mother and a little boy who lived alone in a cabin in the dark woods. There was a monster in the woods, but the mother caught it and kept it locked in the basement. The monster always made scary noises at night, but the mother would tell the boy not to worry because it could never get out. Then she would sing the boy a lullaby to sleep. One day, the monster stopped crawling and instead listened and learned the lullaby. The next day when the mother went out to find food, the monster sang the lullaby from the basement. The little boy heard the lullaby and opened the door. door. If there's something I want to learn more about, it's this Mexis program. This seems to be some sort of antivirus or firewall of some sorts, and it's interesting how it's been implemented, and it's also interesting that it looks like a shadowy rabbit. Either way, remember the start of the video when I said, if there was one place I could guarantee finding lore, it's through Candy Cadet. I think this all pretty much confirms it. We have two parallel stories here, and it only strengthens a lot of our suspicions that we already had about this game. I am so happy that we got Candy Cadet in the first place, and if you have any other interpretations of his final story, I'd love to hear them. Also, let me know what part of Security Breach Ruin you'd like me to make a video on next. I'm planning on making a lot of different theory videos in the near future, so stay tuned for all of that. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you later.